Welcome to Ahead of the Times, where we're back like it's the future. Funeral for police officer. How many were choked up? Apple sued over storage claims, but how much water will the lawsuit hold? Do cyber attacks have you at risk? Don't click here. For the latest on cyber warfare, we go to our senior cyber ring correspondent, Toby. If you haven't heard about the Sony hack by now, you're living under a rock or in North Korea. But for our viewers who are getting this show on a DVD attached to a balloon, here's the recap. Previously on Sony's of Anarchy. On November 24th, Sony employees arrived at work to find their computers locked and showing a red skeleton warning them to meet their demands by midnight. A move so cliche, Sony immediately tried to buy the rights for it. The hackers called themselves Guardians of Peace and used the hashtag GOP presumably to show they were serious about blocking any kind of progress. Hackers began leaking Sony employees' private data and emails, demanding they not release the interview and threatening 9-11 style attacks if they did. Is that a style? It seems so 2001. Everyone's kidnapping girls now, bro. Theaters backed out. Sony canceled the movie, then after heavy criticism, ended up releasing it online anyway. It made 15 million, which is an online record, but still a small fraction of what the $44 million movie was expected to make. It's almost like there isn't as much money in online video as people think there is. The FBI announced North Korea was responsible and that they would be taking proportional measures. Soon afterwards, internet access was cut for all of North Korea. Or more specifically, for all 10 people with internet in North Korea. When reached for comment, the NSA replied, Can I do that? Meanwhile, some people doubt North Korea is responsible. It could be an outside group, an inside job, or someone who just really wanted a copy of the movie Fury. The big question is whether this is a coming out day for cyber warfare. My prediction? Yup. This was always something that was going to happen in the future, and perhaps that time is now. There's even rumors some people are already getting attacked by killer robots. For the latest on police reform protests, we go to our senior Protestant Reformation correspondent, Ola. Controversy over police killings continue to boil. In the latest moves, hashtag Black Brunch protests featured activists going into white spaces, namely brunch locations, and reading out the names of black people who had been shot by the police. Protesters said a black man is killed in America by police every 28 hours for crimes ranging from pulling a gun to looking like someone who might pull a gun. The reaction was mixed, with some people allegedly trying to kick them out, and some patrons showing solidarity. But if you truly want to know what brunch patrons think, you'll have to check Yelp later. Protests, three stars, moving but took longer than I expected, and by the time they finished, my omelette was cold. Worth a try? It's odd that they chose hip brunch locations, as those are often patronized by urban liberals. Like hip coffee shops, these are the places where white people who love diversity hang out with only each other. I mean, what are they going to do next? Disrupt an improv show? Block the cash registers at Urban Outfitters? Intercept NPR? They could have protested the police directly, but you know how hard it is to find white police officers when you need them. Meanwhile, NYPD officers turn their back on Mayor Bill de Blasio, who has tried everything to get them to stop pleading, getting Commissioner Bratton to ask them, and finally, offering a heartfelt serenade. De Blasio upset the NYPD by stating he had warned his biracial son, Dante, to be careful in his dealings with the police, whereas the NYPD prefer their chokeholds to come by surprise. NYPD cops say they feel on guard, and that it doesn't help to be presumed dangerous when interacting with their community. If only minorities knew how that felt. Police are also doing a work stoppage, with arrests and tickets down by two thirds over the same week last year. It's nice to know that people who tell protesters to get a job protest by not doing theirs. While people are vehemently divided by police reform, it's less clear what those reforms would be. You know, those little details. Ironically, the two biggest specific reforms, adding body cameras to police and outside prosecutors when cops are accused of crimes, have broad bipartisan support. Civil rights investigations and integrations efforts in Ferguson have already begun, though they require current officers to voluntarily retire or transfer to a community that doesn't hate them. My prediction is many steps will be taken quietly as a result of the protests, but you won't really know it 
until you're being arrested instead of shot and notice, hey, I'm on camera. For the latest on Apple lawsuits, let's go to our senior doing illegal things with computers correspondent, Toby. A new lawsuit alleges that Apple is misrepresenting the capacity of its devices since iOS 8 takes up so much space. This is confusing, so let's explain it. You can trust me, I'm a nerd. Say you buy a 16 gig iPhone. 16 gigs is the size of the disk that's inside your iPhone. Now your operating system is a program which is always gonna take up some space, but it allows you to use your phone. In fact, using special ahead of the time software, we can simulate what an iPhone would look like if we didn't have the operating system. Getting mad that it does is like buying a car and then getting outraged that its engine is taking up valuable storage room. Now to be fair, it's natural to feel frustrated when your storage space shrinks as you upgrade your phone. But newer programs have always taken up more storage capacity. Remember how we make fun of people from the 90s for having 32 megabyte hard drives? If programs didn't get bigger, we'd still be using them. So how is this becoming a lawsuit? It's time for me to say something I have always wanted to. I need to see my lawyer. It's time to lawyer up. Get my lawyer in here. Hi, Toby. Oh, hey, it's Will, my lawyer. Hey, everybody. So what's going on here? Is this like a natural upswelling of people suddenly outraged that their iPhones store less than they thought? Probably not. I don't know the particulars of this specific case, but I know generally how class action lawsuits work. Attorneys find a possible case where there could be a lot of different people affected in the same way. Mm -hmm. Then all they have to do is find one actual person that was affected that way, sue not only on behalf of that one individual person, but everyone similarly situated to that person, and then collect on behalf of everyone then they, in addition to suing on behalf of everyone and getting millions upon millions of dollars, can say to the court, we're entitled to all these fees uh, for all of our hard work. They get paid based on those fees. But it's most of the lawyers that orchestrate this, and they just look for one individual person to kind of be the official, they call it a class representative on behalf of those people. And you'll often see there'll be advertisements saying, have you been affected in such and such a way? And sometimes those are ads by uh, class action attorneys looking for one legitimate person who is affected so that they can then start a lawsuit on behalf of that person and many others, partially to collect fees for all that work that they want to do. If Janine McBride's murder is a parochial concern, why is the independent counsel so interested in it? That's a question I don't have to answer. I don't see how giving him what he wants would imperil your prosecution. So assuming they sue, what happens after that? And there, a very likely situation is that it's in their interest to settle. And so, if they're being sued for, you know, millions of dollars, they may sue for hundred. Uh, they may settle for hundreds of thousands of dollars, and then the individual people get a tiny share of that hundreds of thousands of dollars, or whatever the smaller amount is. And the lawyers can say, we did, you know, a million dollars worth of work. We should get compensated for that, and then Apple would pay that out. Is there anything else you want to add? Yes. If you, or a loved one, has gotten an Android phone that had less storage space than you anticipated, then you must insist on justice. Call the law offices of William Newman immediately at 212-555-0199. We've recovered some amount of money for some people. You may be one of them. So what's my prediction for what will happen? You'll have to speak with my lawyer. Thank you for watching Ahead of the Times. Comment with your own predictions and subscribe now to stay truly Ahead of the Times.